Hi, my name is Laura Palmer Graham, and I was a 2015 graduate from Miami University. While I was here, I studied marketing in the Farmer School of Business, and aside from that, I was involved in a lot of great things on campus. Um, namely, I was in Sketched Out Improv, which is the comedy group on campus, which really kind of helped me discover and hone my love of comedy. And I was also a member of Pi Sigma Epsilon, which is a business fraternity, which helped me kind of um, put on my business hat and uh, flex that muscle as well. Um, I was also in Crew and uh, Treble Makers briefly, the acapella group on campus. So um, through all those different activities, in addition to my social sorority, Alpha Delta Pi, um, I was able to really find a home at Miami University and uh, feel like I belonged. So I absolutely loved my time here and um, I'm so grateful to be back. So during my time at Miami, um, one of my biggest goals was to find something that I loved to do. Um, I didn't want to settle for a career where I was just kind of happy. Um, I wanted to find something that excited me and that kept me up at night. And um, <clears throat> that was where Sketched Out Improv really came in. Um, I loved comedy and I wanted to find a way to weave that into my life, but I just didn't know what that looked like on a practical level after graduation. Um, so I knew I loved comedy and I knew I loved TV. Specifically, I loved Late Night. Um, I was a huge fan of Late Show with David Letterman, which is no longer on the air, but he's a legend. And so in brainstorming those things, um, I decided I was gonna send in um, an application to be an intern at uh, Dave Letterman's show. And through you know a kind connection who put my resume on the top of, of the stack, I was able to get an interview and um, just conveyed to them how much I loved the show, how hard I wanted to work, and that when they asked me to do something, my feet would hit the ground running. Uh, you wouldn't have to ask me to do anything twice. And after I was really fortunate in getting that internship, um, I did work my tail off and I really wanted to make other people's jobs easier. And so in doing that, I fell in love with late night and I fell in love with TV. And I wound up um, spending the summer there, um, learning um, and kind of soaking everything in. From there, I moved on to um, Saturday Night Live. So I spent season 39 there working on commercial parodies and music video parodies as an intern and really loving that and loving the people I met there and really kind of learning the nuts and bolts of how they operate. So I was really fortunate to have those experiences, but I knew I wanted to finish my degree, so I came back to Miami, um, which was awesome and I loved spending time here. Um, but I decided to check out the West Coast to see if that might be a good fit. So. I went out and I was an intern at Conan for a summer <clears throat> just to see kind of how that different operation works and what that looks like on a practical level. And I learned a lot and I loved the people I met there as well. And during my time there, I was able to connect with um, a wonderful woman at Jimmy Kimmel Live who's the executive producer and um, I just really loved the vision she had and I loved what she was about. Um, and. When I came up at graduation, she kept me in mind and I was hired as her assistant. Um, so I worked as her assistant on Jimmy Kimmel Live and am now in the process of, of moving into a new position as an associate producer on the show, um, which deals a lot with human interest segments. So, um, you know, finding interesting people to be a part of the show and uh, researching other guests to uh, make sure that they have interesting stories um, to tell on the show and that we can kind of unearth those. So all in all, I really love what I do and I love the people I work with and I feel very fortunate and I couldn't have done it without the support um, that Miami gave me. Um, I really feel like they kept me buoyant and allowed me to find my passions while I was here. Um, in a late night show, obviously you're putting together a show for every single night. Um, and there's a lot of moving parts that I'm just a very small cog in that machine. Um, but Monday through Thursday, we put on a show and um, there's a process in the morning where the writers are brainstorming and they're sending ideas out for the monologue and then producers have to know um, what elements are going into the field so that we know exactly um, what things need to be shot like a man on the street or a lie witness news. Um, so we need to know all of those elements and we need to make sure that everybody's communicating and so um, as an assistant, I was really working to um, schedule those, you know, helping to schedule the meetings and making sure that everybody was on the same page um, in terms of that. Um, and then looking forward, um, moving into an AP role, I'm excited to be working with human interest segments. So um, what that means is if we have somebody who goes viral, um, there was, 
you know, there are certain people who will do something crazy and their video will go viral and we want to be the first ones to find them and track them down um, so that we can talk to them and hear more about their story. So um, that's one of my favorite parts because usually it's a, a regular Joe um, who, you know, uh, for example, we had, this was probably a couple years ago when the Cubs were in the World Series, we had a guy who was in the background of um, a newscast who was just sobbing of joy. And the fun chase of trying to find that guy so that we could talk to him and give him Cubs tickets um, and have him report back to us was such a thrill because, um, you know, I think there's nothing more fun than making somebody's day with a call saying, hey, we think you're great. Why don't you come and, and check out our show? So um, that's something I really enjoy and um, I work with a lot of people that are a lot smarter than me. Um, so I love learning from them and, and kind of uh, helping to make their jobs easier too. I really, really like the people I work with, which I think is important and I think it would be important if I worked in the steel industry or if I worked in TV um, because I'm a people person and um, I work with really excellent people and I think that's important. Um, on a more logistical side specific to um, what I help to do on the show. I really love it when I can track somebody down, um, like I was talking about when there's somebody who has a video go viral or when there's somebody who has kind of their 15 minutes of fame. Um, I find a great deal of joy in the challenge of finding them. So if somebody you know um, has a video that goes viral I love being able to find them first and I love being able to make that phone call and say hey we saw your video it's awesome can we talk to you about maybe coming to our show or talking to us about your story um, because you know that you're creating a memory for them um, and you know they're gonna be telling their kids about the time that they got a call from a national TV show because they did something crazy um, and I just think that's so fun and I love being a part of that narrative in their life and I love helping to kind of um, to create that from scratch. So I think kind of the, the thrill of the chase of finding people um, is one of the things I like the most too. But truly it like, kind of comes down to the people that I work with. I think, you know, a lot of excellent women, a lot of excellent smart people that I'm lucky to just sit near and learn from. So, so as a Miami student, grades are important because your GPA and your grades are a great litmus test for whoever's hiring you to see this person works hard, this person is committed to their studies, they're committed to bettering themselves. Um, and so I would really caution anybody from shirking that off because the academic side is really important. In addition to that, I think that cultivating yourself as a person in college and making sure that you're well-rounded and that you are pursuing your passions and that you are, in doing so, becoming more interesting. You are um, kind of chipping away at what makes you you and solidifying that in college. And as you learn your passions, I would hope that it happens organically. Um, I found out I loved comedy. I reached out to every person I knew who had ever done a stand-up set or who had ever worked in TV just simply because I wanted to know what set their heart on fire about it or um, advice they had because again um, as a student sometimes I felt like I knew a lot more than I did but I in reality wanted to learn from the people who had already blazed that trail and already had done that and it, there's a lot of wisdom to come from people who have already done what you're hoping to do so in getting internships and in applying I would hope that you would want to be the best intern you could be and you want to get those internships so reach out to anybody and everyone you can um, you know you might send out 10 emails with impassioned um, words about how much you would love to speak to them and you might only hear back from one person but you only need one person to respond because that's a person who can give you great insight and they can tell you hey I wish I would have done this differently when I was your age or I wish I would have really leaned into this so I would encourage you, even if you're not looking for an internship, be reaching out to those people in your aspirational field that have done it and are maybe a little wiser than you because it's only gonna better you. And then when the time does come for an internship, you already have um, a portfolio of people who you have gone to for wisdom and they know you're a proactive person now. So you can go to them and they have more context to put you in saying, oh, she came to me when she didn't need anything. Now, 
you know, I know that she's proactive, I know that she's hungry for this, and they're gonna be able to vouch for you a little bit more because they have a bigger, wider picture of who you are. Um, so I would encourage you to reach out to people who are succeeding in your aspirational field and try to glean everything you can from them um, and go from there. I think for Miami students who are hoping to move into the television industry or the movie industry or the new media industry, there are a lot of alumni working in Los Angeles and New York. And I think that take an hour and do some due diligence and find those people. Um, we've got people at CNN, we've got people at um, Morning Joe, we've got people all over the place. And so most of the time we have such fond memories of Miami to connect with somebody who's currently having that experience is kind of a treat for us too. Um, and so even if, you know, we're not really in a place to, you know, put you up for a production assistant job or anything at the time, uh, I would say reaching out to those people and just letting them know that you're interested and that you are a hard worker. And um, I remember when I was reaching out to folks, my, my kind of my mantra was, hey, what can I do to make your job easier? I want to facilitate you having an easier day at work. And I just want to be there kind of as a wallflower to, to see and learn what you do, because that's really valuable. And so kind of taking that stance of, hey, I know I'm a student. I know that um, I know that you work really hard. What can I do to help you? And I would love to learn along the way. So I feel that while you're in college and while you're a Miami student, you have this golden ticket where you are figuring out what you want to do and in doing that and deciding on your passions and really starting to cement what you want your career to look like, you have the ability to reach out to anybody and everybody without it feeling um, without it feeling like you have ulterior motives. You are a college student, you are trying to narrow the scope of your career, you are trying to figure out what you want to do, and reaching out to those people, you don't need a job yet, you don't need connections yet, you just want to hear what they did, and what they did right, and maybe what they did wrong. And so you can reach out, you know, shoot for the stars. You, you know, the nice thing about TV is we've got credits. So if you have a show you love, you can reach out to anybody. And you might not hear back, but if you do, you're able to glean that information and that advice through a coffee or through a phone call and you are able to establish that connection. And even if you're living in Ohio and you want to connect with somebody in New York, you're able to do that, which is a great thing. And so when you do come time for graduation, you can reach out to those people again and they already have a context to put you in and they'll think, hey, this person connected with me when they didn't need anything when they were just trying to figure out what they wanted to do and when they were trying to narrow their scope and they were eager and they were hardworking and that's the kind of person that I want on my team. So there's a golden ticket while you're in college that you can speak to anybody and everybody without it feeling weird um, and without you talking to a competitor once you have a job and what you know things like that. So I would really encourage you to take this time while you're in a neutral zone of, hey, I'm just trying to learn and reach out to as many people as you can because there are a lot of people who are in your aspirational industry who are wiser than you and they're going to be able to help you out and you don't know what you don't know. So find that out.